Are we on? Yeah. Right then, Nettie. Welcome to, and in fact, I think you're actually our first remote guest that we've had on JC Podcast. Does that, does that make you feel special? All the way from Czechoslovakia. All the way from Czechoslovakia. <laughs> <laughs> cool. How have, how have you been? How's training been going? Really good. Um, I got a taste of the intensity again, trying to do the Buda Pumse qualifiers for the team. Yeah. Never done so many qualifiers for one competition. But <laughs> it's a lot, isn't it? Every time I finish, I was like, oh, this is a good one. I'm going to program it for the class. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> the class are good. Catfished you all in saying that it was uh, it was just three individual workouts each, and then what have you got? You got five each. Um, five no, each, I think. There's seven. Yeah, there's seven in total. But have you got seven workouts to do each? Yeah, you end up doing seven workouts. Well, the twenty minute one you can count as one really. So. Yeah, yeah, yeah. 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 So that's fucking, it's a lot. <laughs> it's a lot of workouts. Good job we got ten days to do them. Eh? Well, some have 10 days and people who book themselves whole trips and then <laughs> yeah. only have three days to do that. Oh, well. But yeah, at least I get it done and I'm going to and it doesn't hang over my head. Yeah, so exactly. Exactly. Cool. So we put out some, um, we put on Instagram some questions to fire at you. Yeah. Um, they were all kind of have a bit of a, a, a similar, similar feel to them and they're kind of a, about your training your experiences in training and in competition and kind of like what you've learned over the years. Um, so how long have you been training CrossFit for? Uh, no. Since 2012. Okay, 2012. so good nine years. Good nine years, right. Yeah. Nearly ten. I keep saying ten, but it's just because I'm shit at math when it goes to It feels like 15 then. It does, doesn't it? You just multiply it by three. Yeah. <laughs> multiply it by three and add five. When, when you started CrossFit, was that kind of always the goal to kind of get to regionals in the games and that sort of stuff, or did you kind of just, I don't know, start off and... Actually, yeah. To be fair, uh, we started CrossFit with a PT. Me and Amanda had a PT friend, Pat, and he always gave us these weird like, exercises, but he didn't call them like thruster, he wanted to call them enigma, which <laughs> is <just> called <laughs> random. <laughs> It was thrusters and movies and it was proper CrossFit and then um, our other friend kept nagging us to come and join us at CrossFit gym yeah. but it was 20 minute drive from our town to the next town and I was like oh I just can't be asked to do that but Matt signed us up for open day and then we got there then he signed us up for membership and that's it that was first um, first time I started CrossFit and it turned out I was pretty good at that to start with because yeah. um, Coming from Eastern Europe, I was pretty strong, <laughs> and um, I just loved the fact that you got to do everything. And I think it was just before we joined that CrossFit gym, Matt booked us uh, tickets to Copenhagen to watch regionals. Okay. I had no idea like what the regionals actually meant. And we were watching all these girls. I was like, Oh my God, this girl! Look at her. She just keeps winning everything. <laughs> And so it was Annie Thorey Soldier, I didn't even know who she was then. Yeah. And I remember watching them doing um, 100 kilo deadlifts, followed by my slabs, handstand walking, and I was like, fuck you, this is epic. I, yeah, yeah. <laughs> I'd love to be able to do that. I'd, I'd like to compete on that stage. Yeah. Um, but looking back, actually, uh, because that was my first experience, and I just really wanted to go and compete on that stage, uh, that's as far as I got. Yeah. When you do regionals as an individual, um, like you know, in the elite, elite category. Yeah. And I wonder if my first experience were the games, and I saw the games, and if that was what I was aiming for, whether that's what I would put all my eggs into the basket to go there. Yeah. I don't regret anything, and um, it was brilliant. Um, yeah. But that's pretty much how my competitive. Um, yeah, it started yeah. at the Copenhagen Regionals. When when you, you said then about um, you know growing up in Czech, East, Eastern European, and that meant you you were pretty strong. What what is it that growing up uh, you know in Czechoslovakia that what's the difference between you know you've, you've lived in the UK now for what sixteen years? Like you know what people yeah. what the culture's like over here. What is it in Czech, Czechoslovakia that meant that I you don't had, know. no? <laughs> This is going to be so controversial. It's probably all the drugs that all the ancestors. <laughs> <laughs> well, take them, take it. <laughs> um, to be fair, um, because I, 
like I hadn't really, I was born into communism, but I didn't really experience it. My family didn't really experience it like the hard way like some other people did. Yeah. Um, but nothing, nothing was really given. And so I think given the history, um, it was probably just, I, I grew up in quite poor family as well. So just being grateful for anything, like I'm always happy for handovers or if somebody took me on holiday, I was really happy for that. So I think it's not just a physical, that's yeah, just yeah. genetics. Yeah. I was just lucky to be born with it. But I think just being grateful for any opportunities or anything that arises, yeah. um, that makes a big difference. For yeah, me. definitely. definitely. I'd, I'd just like to go back to the, you know, when you said like, you know, if your ex- first experience um, of like seeing CrossFit on a big stage would have been at the games, like you feel like, oh, maybe I would have like pushed more towards that. Um, yeah. Like if you were to, I don't know, kind of look at your kind of CrossFit career and, and, and what you've done, would you kind of tell 2013 Nettie to dream bigger or what, what we, what's your kind of thoughts there? And obviously you made the games this year, like how's your kind of mindset changed from, you know, when you initially saw regionals and got to regionals to, to this year? It was definitely, I would definitely tell myself to dream big. Um, I think that's part of my upbringing as well because we just, from, from, my parents are quite modest. They don't really have massive, they don't really, they're happy with the little they have. So, and it's great yeah. because they're just happy, but they never really dream, they never dreamt big. So, yeah. I never really dreamt big. So, yeah seeing that big stage that it was probably the biggest thing I could think of for myself and even then it sounded pretty massive um, so I would definitely tell myself not to put any limits yeah. and that is probably the biggest difference um, going into this season just reminding myself there is there's just no limits yeah. we can do whatever we want um, as long as we put the effort in obviously and if that's what I want and then anything is doable and achievable but yeah I think that's the way I would definitely tell myself. How, how much of that do you feel like because 2013 is still pretty you know CrossFit was very young at that point it probably it was what was it about six years old in total but in Europe probably only a few years a few years old so the opportunities in 2013 competition wise like it was just regionals really like there wasn't yeah. it wasn't really much opportunity to go like like you did um, well it was nearly two years ago now go over to Miami at Wadapalooza and then you know hopefully again do it do it next year um, so how much do you feel like the growth of CrossFit cro- the growth of CrossFit has on like what you as- what you'd aspire to get to rather than just kind of like you know what you what you'd seen do you think it's because CrossFit wasn't as big then that you only aspired to get to regionals or would you just put it down to? Possibly. Um, I'm quite glad I started then though because it was quite it was quite nice because you literally, once you competed in one competition, well, if you competed at regionals, you knew everyone then. Yeah, and yeah. I, and uh, I, I love that. Yeah. So that's what we do with the battles. You just keep it so small because the community is really what makes CrossFit yeah. So great. Uh, so I'm happy I actually started then, and um, but it definitely was exposure. Yeah. Like if you expose, the more you, exp- the more things you're exposed to, the more yeah you can dream bigger there, and you can aim higher. Yeah. So, yeah. The the next thing I'd like to kind of latch on again from what you just said now, kind of about your your parents and uh, and that sort of stuff. Um, so you said you know they were kind of happy with what they've got, and I can imagine, like like you said, living in Eastern Europe, everyone just kind of cracked on. They did their own thing, they got on with it, and I feel like in training you're very much like that. Like you know you have your highs and lows, but you just you still kind of crack on and just get it done. Would you agree with that, or I don't know, yeah. what's your? It, it's always putting to the bigger picture, like yeah. how. In a grand scheme of things, how does this really one bad session? How does it really matter in your thirty-seven years of life? Like <laughs> a tiny little thing. Like yeah, obviously it will. It will piss me off. I'm still thinking about that first bloody workout. Why the hell did I choke my hands on the last of the pull-ups? <laughs> just take that fall and like, don't do that again. Yeah. Um, so yeah, it's just putting everything into perspective. 
Mm. Yeah. Uh, like there's so much more to life than one bad day of training, one bad workout. Even if it's months, like bad months of training, it's just it's a month. It's how, a month. how did you learn to get that perspective though? Did you learn it, or did you feel like you already kind of had it before you started CrossFit? Or there was a lot of learning because when I started CrossFit, I've never done anything on a competitive level so I had to learn to be an athlete and I had to learn what like everything that it brings so the, mainly the mindset really that's been the biggest thing show me what to eat when to eat I'll do that show me what to do in the training how to like how to do it what it's supposed to look like I will do it um what do you expect from me I will go and do it but yeah. then there's always that man mental battle in everything that's what makes the difference. So yeah. that's what I just had to learn all the way. But I think because naturally I'm a positive person, I, I always see light at the end of the tunnel. I always know, doesn't matter how bad it is now, it's gonna get better. Um, it's just easier for me to get, just to stay patient and just wait uh, until things get better. Just yeah. work, just chip away through it. Yeah, it might feel shit for a bit. Probably help, um, not helped, but um, I learned that from uh, when I, before I qualified for the regionals, it took me actually three years. I was probably ready to qualify in, so the first year I qualified was 2016. I was probably ready to qualify in 2014, uh, but I fractured my hand on yeah. a box jump, literally a month before they opened. So I was in a cast. So when my hand came off the cast, it was the first week of the Open, and each new week I added new movements to, to be able to do with my hand, it was pretty much in the Open. So yeah. I still didn't do too bad then. I uh, qualified at 80th place and like 30th. Right. So considering I just came out of the cast, I knew I have that. And then, oh no, that was 2000, yeah, 2014. And then 2015, I was like, okay, I'm, I'm fucking ready for this now. <laughs> In January, I bulged my disc, and so three oh, months yes. before the open, I couldn't even bend over to do my shoelaces. I couldn't sit. It was it. It wasn't. Luckily, it wasn't nothing. Neuro, like the, there's there's new, no neural pain. It was it was pretty manageable. Uh, but it took three months of not touching any weights, not doing anything, keeping. I worked with Jalsi then for three months, and um, at that point I didn't have strict muscle ups, strict with muscle ups. So all I could do was strict gymnastics. So while I was not able to do any of the typical CrossFit stuff, I hammered the strict gymnastics strength. And when I finally qualified for the regionals, there was the strict. strict. Yeah, 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 there was. Really? Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> because of that, and the first, first uh, workout was Smash Ladder, happy days. Yeah. And the second workout was Nate. Yeah. And I, that was the most fun I've had in a workout ever. And then I ended up in the top heat with the four top girls. And I was like, rabbit in the headlights. I was like, what am I doing yeah. here? So that experience alone made me realize that everything bad, something good will come out of it eventually. Yeah. If you let it, if you don't just give in to feeling sorry for yourself. I cried as well when I did my bad. Of course I cried, I had a, I had a day of feeling sorry for myself and then just to go on with it. Yeah. So you said then that obviously you had no, uh, you know, no athletic background before you started CrossFit. So you just had, so you had to learn how to be an athlete once you started yeah. training CrossFit. Um, and you know, it's probably more common that athletes that you were competing around in 2016, 17, 18 at regionals are coming into CrossFit off the back of either a good level sport or semi or professional level sport in a, in a different sport uh, and have had skills and mindset to transfer over. From you starting as a blank canvas, who was it around you or what was it around you that because everything you're explaining then about getting the injury and how you dealt with it and kind of like your your attitude towards training in the very early years is pretty much what it takes sometimes people like in three or four years to actually to figure out so who was it that was around doing that in those early years that helped kind of helps you make the right decisions and have have the right mindset um you know because two for 
like, let's say you were ready in 2014 for regionals, like one year into CrossFit, you're at regionals level, uh, pretty much. Like that's that's pretty much fast track for someone who's not had a competitive um, sporting background before. I was so lucky because when I started CrossFit, the first month that in the gym where we trained, um, my coach John then. He ran a strength uh, cycle and I think it was maybe eight weeks of three times a week we focused purely on Olympic weightlifting. One day snatch, one day clean and jerk and one day accessory work for the Olympic weightlifting. And we could then do maybe two classes a week of CrossFit. So I was so, so lucky that I, when I started CrossFit, I actually pretty much started with somebody who was purely focused on moving really well. Yeah. Obviously, we were trying to lift heavy weights, but it was all about the technique. So nobody ever threw me in a workout with snatch and like yeah. three to one go. Yeah. I was. We were drilling the technique for eight months, and then I really enjoyed. Uh, we really got on with John. He he's an absolute geek. He's very similar uh, to you, Steve, as well. <laughs> Thanks. And, he's uh, good looking, is he? <laughs> <laughs> and uh, he he just he's <laughs> we we keep taking the piss out of him that he's on the spectrum of being autistic because he just likes things in a very particular way. Yeah. But uh, it really resonated with me the way he was doing things. He he didn't do uh, like he would take everything from the basics and yeah. not let me progress until we nailed those basics. So after the eight week course, I started doing the crossfit classes, but I really didn't enjoy the fact that I only did like one day of toast to bar and then I wouldn't see it for another two weeks. Yeah. And I really wanted to get better at them. So we, quite, uh, we carried on with John having a PT session just for Olympic weightlifting, doing crossfit. And then we had in-house conflict, oh, I think it was London, London Throwdown, one of the first ones. Yeah. And uh, people like told me to sign up, so I did, and I qualified. So I started working with John a little bit more on like other things like handstand walls and like the gymnastics. And then it just naturally shifted into me having my own programming in preparation for the competition. And then we just stuck with it. Yeah. And uh, that was probably what what kept me going for all these years with yeah there was one freak injury that yeah. would probably happen at one point at some point anyway because of the way my back is and um i'm jumping on the box like a retard so <laughs> <laughs> as a, but apart from that um my body's been able to handle all these years of training because everything is done the right way yeah not not yeah yeah. So I've, I'd actually set you up there to, to big Matt up and say that he was the he was the game changer. He was the, he, Matt was the guy that um, you know helped you make the right decisions. But you've actually sorry, you've just com- you've just completely um, <laughs> fobbed him off. So I'm sorry, Matt, but I did I tried. Well, she's clearly not interested. To be fair, Matt is solely responsible for me doing CrossFit yeah. because he signed us up. He is the one who pushed me into competing. He is the one. I would not. I, he's the one who took me to the regionals. Yeah. He, like, he's always been the one, just pushing me in the right direction. Yeah. And if it wasn't for him, I, I, I would just be happily training with that PT doing enigmas. Yeah, that's <laughs> one thing that. Yeah, that's that's one thing I remember when when um, I sent you a message and asked if you wanted to join in our what a loser team in two thousand was it two thousand twenty just before COVID twenty twenty. Yeah. Um, Matt, I think Matt responded to me before you actually did, <laughs> and he was like, "Yeah, she's coming," and then like he's taking over like the gym and he's gonna sort everything. Like she's coming, yeah, with, like he's... book her on. And then same, same. Then when I messaged saying if you wanted to come down for the training camp before semi-finals last year, I think again he messaged me back before you did, <laughs> um, and said that that, 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 that you were that you were coming. <laughs> Yeah, um, he is he is absolutely amazing like that. And to be honest, I just would not be able to do it without him. Yeah. Genuinely, all the he is always my judge. Yeah. He, he's not he's not giving me any reps like yeah. you could see it at the quarters last year when I flew over the box. <laughs> Get up and go again. <laughs> um, but he has he's set everything up for me. 
from work, from being able to take time off. And if, even when he was ill, uh, that this is this is probably one of the things that I hate most about when I was um, competing at high level. I would the, like the training and my competitions would take priority over everything else. Yeah. And he still, and he still, he was still there for me, even though yeah. he needed me to be there for him. So, yeah, yeah he's absolute. Yeah, he's a, he's a good yeah, guy, isn't he? Salt of the earth is what we, what we call him up north. So have you, like like you just said, so have you managed to find a bit of a balance between, you know, training and competitions and, and balancing kind of, um, like, family life, or does it still kind of take a bit more precedence now? Like, does it more even? Does it still kind of, you know, just competitions could still become a bit more important? Because I think we all know as athletes... Like you've got to be selfish to some extent to get to the levels that you want to, um, and like you say, you need that team behind you to enable to do you to do that to support you and go in that direction with you. So, what's the balance these days compared to maybe 2016 and 2017? So 20 um, 2018 when we opened our own that was the last regionals, and after that we opened our own gym in 2019. So up until then, yeah, my training was priority. We don't we didn't get any more holidays unless we travelled to cross crossfit competition. <laughs> and yeah, it was all about me. And then we opened the gym and suddenly it couldn't be all about me. And uh, we had to really put a lot of effort into running a business and learning how to run business together as a husband and wife <laughs> and, um, <laughs> that's, uh, that's still a uh, work in progress um, not recommended <laughs> but it's great to buy it's uh, beginning that um, it's a great business though to have so it's, it's worth the bustles and I realized that I just did not have the mental capacity to, to handle both. Yeah. It wasn't even about the time. I could find the time if I wanted to find the time, but it was about the me- like having the mental capacity to deal with the intensity of the training and the focus and the food and sleep. Like you can't just fire on, like your life is sort of dials and like you just can't fire the them all being on 10. Yeah, yeah. Some of them will have to go to one, to six, seven. So my training is my life. So that is my lifestyle. So I just took a step back from the competitive side, but I carried on training. Mm-hmm. And instead of focusing on intensity, I just focused mm-hmm. on uh, moving well and doing things well and just enjoying the training. If there were days when I didn't want to train, I didn't train and it wasn't a biggie. When I didn't get enough sleep, it wasn't a biggie. Um, but I was crazy a bit mad. <laughs> um, how, how, how was the, how did you find the difference in mindset you'd have day to day, waking up during 2014 up until 2018 where you're waking up and it's about training, it's about progressing, it's about getting better. Literally every step of what you're doing every day and every yeah. thought that you're having is going in towards training and, and improving. Yeah. To then kind of like, you know, in the space of a couple of months and opening the gym, that mindset is just kind of, you know, like you're saying, then it's become, the training doesn't become the most important thing. How hard or how easy did you find it to get out of that mindset and have a different mindset during that period of time? You know what, I think it took me a whole year until I started competing again of going back and forth, yeah. of thinking like, all right, you know what, maybe I don't want to be an athlete anymore, maybe this is fine, maybe I just want to be a coach and business owner and still be fit. And then the following day I would wake up, like, or well, I would see something on social media, I was like, oh, fuck, that, like, I don't think I've reached my potential yet. Yeah. Like, am I wasting it here? Or it, like, oh, and then the following day I was like, no, I'm fine, I'm cool with this. Yeah. I'm, I can just, train for fun this is really great and then it, I think it was actually back and forth until I started competing again yeah because I, 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 I find that I find that you can I can go a few weeks of just being really happy that you know not not trying to train as a competitor anymore um, and completely fine with it and then just literally just wake up one day or just like you'll just go into this yeah. thought, randomly just go into this thought process and you're just back into that athlete mind 
and try and then you, you're in that kind of like that headspace where you're like oh I should be doing this training I should be doing that training I should be trying you know should be working on you know these weaknesses or, or whatever what, what when you do have those or when you did have those moments because things have changed a little bit now um, when you did have those moments like what did you do to kind of get things back into perspective and you know I think when I couldn't put when I didn't put that effort into the training I just tried to put it into my work yeah so then I just then I just thought okay the same because this being athlete that mental focus and discipline and everything you can apply to anything in life so just apply it to work um but yeah it's still you will still go back and forth on like yeah. how you how you feel about these things. Yeah. But yeah, it's just applying it, putting the effort somewhere else to keep <laughs> yeah. to keep it in check. Definitely. So what? So now, kind of, what keeps you going as an athlete? You know, what is your kind of goal now? Like going going forward, like what keeps you kind of training? You know, what gets you excited? Um, yeah. Um, the, I, I actually want to say that when I was, because I had that break since we opened up and then I got a message from Taylor to see if I want to compete with you guys in a of Palooza and I, I was thinking, I, I did not, I've I been training but I did not feel competitive, competition ready at all so <laughs> that got me really excited and really nervous at the same time and I had I think two months to get ready, to get competition ready and I remember putting that focus into eating well, sleeping well, taking back all my supplements and like really putting the intensity into training. I just remember how horrible it felt the first two weeks like, because getting back into that, like into that pain cave is not fun to start with. Yeah. Um, but I just remember how satisfying it was and um, it just gave me purpose again. <laughs> And I realized how much I missed it. And uh, when we came back from Guadalupe, I was so pumped up to go back to competing <laughs> until literally the next day I got to work. I was like, oh, fuck. <laughs> <laughs> like, oh, my God, I can't do this. <laughs> so then I was back into, like, oh, okay, no, I'll, I'll be a coach again then. <laughs> and then um, I think um, right now my goal, like, having a taste of the games that's just what that's what keeps me going even yeah. when i don't want to do anything i'm so i just think i would like to stand on that podium on top of the podium yeah. which is the third place in my category and uh, so that's what's in my mind now yeah and that's what keeps me going um, but i think for many people lockdowns were shit for our gym as a business it wasn't great but for me and matt to have space to just be able to just breathe again and be us again it was brilliant and I think yeah. that's what made a big difference for me to be yeah. able to qualify for the games um, this year because yeah. I had that break from work and I could focus on being athlete again and not having to worry about um, 130 people that are our members yeah, yeah. worry about me and Matt yeah and that was, that, yeah that was that helped actually. Good. On that then, on the um, on your games uh, appearance, one of the questions that we had on when we asked on Instagram was if you could have one takeaway from your experience of the games, maybe your experience from when you got there, the bits of training that you did in the USA while you were there, and then the games itself. If you could take away one thing from either training or just the whole experience in general that you've then implemented since you've been back to life and training what would you what would you say is whether it's something you do in training or it's a thought process or a mindset like one thing it's a thought process it's just back yourself up yeah. I've got all these because that is probably one of my biggest weaknesses just not being confident enough in my abilities yeah. and I think for the first time ever at the games I was actually competing with people in the same Kind of, not not the same situation. Most of most of the women have families or run businesses, so in, in our similar situation, some very very few were doing CrossFit full time as a full time athlete. So 
it was so nice to be able to compete against people who are not full-time athletes and yeah. then it's a little bit more comparable to what I do. Yeah. So that gave me a massive boost of confidence and uh, and it, I bring that with me. I know I can, I, I know I can do better and yeah. I know, yeah, I need, um, I'm backing myself up a little bit more. Yeah. I always tell myself, um, there was actually, this was from a post that Emma Toll posted when she felt, she said she, for the first time, even if she didn't yes. qualify for the games, she was happy with it because she wasn't competing, she wasn't there in those qualifiers to survive. Yeah. She was there to compete and fight. And like, that was the best post I've seen a whole year because that just stuck with me. And every time I, when I want to slow down or give up in the workout, I just think I'm not a survivor. I'm here to compete. I'm a yeah. competitor. I'm a I'm a kids athlete now. So yeah, that's we what's we've had that. We've had that. We had a good conversation about that, didn't we? I remember when Emma made that yeah. post, and we had a good conversation about it. And I I resonated with it as well. In the year, it was probably the year before I qualified. So so in 2014 is when I when I felt like that. Was like you know what? The previous years I was turning up to, um, you know. To participate at regionals and 2014 it, it felt more like right well I'm now I'm competing at regionals like I'm competing for yeah. the top spots um, and that kind of when you have that mindset it does make a huge difference with like just how you approach your strategy per, per workout how you approach your recovery after workout because you're just in that mind frame of of performance and getting the most out of your performance rather than just in the mind frame of just like oh I'm just here having a good time and like we'll finish the workout and go and doss about for half an hour like you're in the zone a little bit more and you know you feel like a competitor rather than a, a, a participant um, yeah. that's what it felt like for me all the regionals I've been to I, I was just a participant yeah. and that's why I never made it to the top not even top 10 because I was just there to have fun and I had the great time um, but because in my head before I even got there I thought well all these girls are so fucking great there's no way I can compete with them so I'll just go and have fun and do my best yeah. but I wasn't there to compete whereas going to the games I think uh, qualifying in such a high, high spot really helped with yeah. my confidence massively I, I've never ever qualified anywhere this high so I think going into that with that mindset and also not knowing any of the girls, so I could not even think like, oh, this girl will be good at this, this girl will be good at that. I could just completely focus on myself and yeah. what I need to do. And that's what I told myself before every workout, just do you. Yeah. And and it was just amazing. It was, I've never had that kind of feeling ever. Just that, so much confidence in me and it, it was really empowering actually and it felt fucking good does change the whole experience doesn't it when you have yeah. Just, yeah just change the whole competition experience in the whole lead up and and the competition itself i think uh obviously the way you qualified you know for the games and you on the online qualifiers that was obviously the the evidence to you that like you can you can get there and like you say it was that boost of confidence I know, uh, like more recently, for when I'm talking to the athletes in uh, like on a day-to-day -day basis, I can constantly try to remind them of evidence. Like when they're having negative thoughts before like a workout, it's like, well, let's put this in perspective. Let's look at a workout you did a couple of weeks ago, and let's just, you know, you did well there. You did, you managed to do this. So let's apply it to this workout. It's that evidence, and I feel like that's a really good kind of thing to focus on is using that and focusing on that and using it for the workout that you're about to do rather than being like this workout's going to be shit. Yeah. <laughs> Probably will, I'm sorry. <laughs> <laughs> okay, well, I can do it. No, um, this is actually the same kind of, um, so at the, at the beginning of the year, um, just to, because you were talking about the life balance, work balance, athlete balance, and I just, in, in my head it just felt like a massive chaos and I didn't know how to put them into separate compartments so at the beginning of the year I had like a few therapy sessions with um, Joe who was absolutely amazing and one of the things it all actually came down to me I don't know about my comfort about confidence and how I viewed myself as a person 
and about the perfectionist and uh, like all the other things. So one of the homeworks she made me do was just to write down three things that I did that day that defined what kind of person I was. And I just did that for two weeks and um, I still have it in my phone because then when we spoke at the, at the next session, she was like, so I did this and she's like, oh, so what does it say about you? And I sat there, she's like, um, I'm kind. I was like, oh yeah, I'm kind. <laughs> <laughs> what does this say about you? was like, oh, you're disciplined. Oh, I am, I am. <laughs> <laughs> And it's just, um, again, it's like, just evidence based of like, how awesome we actually are. Like yeah. if we stop focusing on the negative things, if we actually look at all the good things that we do, then yeah, you just it boosts your confidence so much more. It just makes yeah. you so much happier person. The happier you are, everything else kind of falls into place. Exactly. I remember having that conversation just before uh, semi finals about like, oh, do you what you know, what do you record after you train? And you said, Oh, I'll record three things that I did, you know, well in today's session. And I, I said to you, you know, do you record what didn't go well? And you actually like, no, because I feel like I used to always kind of focus on that too much. And it, you said, no, I need to kind of focus more on the positives because that gives me that confidence uh, more, which is just a really interesting point because I'm sure there's loads of other athletes out there that are like, you know, oh, I need to work on this, I need to do this. And they're kind of pretty hard on themselves, which, you do need to be to some extent, but I feel yeah. like taking them positives as well is, is super important. Yeah. yeah. But then that's what your coach is there <clears> for. <throat> like if you have a good coach, I do now. <laughs> have a you did before there. as well, yeah, not just now. Yeah. <laughs> yes, it <he> could be. <laughs> um, uh, that's what your coach is there for. Like if you give your coach feedback, they will be able to assess the situation and they can decide like what you need to do for yourself. Obviously, you communicate with them as well. You make you take responsibility for this. Uh, so I'm fully aware of where I need to get better. But that doesn't like yeah that that will not help. Or finishing session, looking at it, it's like well that didn't go well. That yeah. didn't go well. Yeah. I, it's it's gonna make me feel shit about myself yeah. instead of giving me that confidence in oh I did. I did this. This is this is really good. I'm happy with this. I'm happy with that. I'm happy with yeah. that. So. It just makes you dread yeah. if something didn't go well, and you focus on the thing that didn't go well. It makes you dread it when that yeah. comes back around, and you train in that yeah. area again. You just like oh, you you remember the negative, and then it's just like straight back into that negative yeah. thought again, isn't it? Yeah. Um, you came over to Wigan. Yeah. Uh, just uh, just after quarterfinals. And how long were you here for? Two months? Yeah, eight weeks? Ten weeks? Ten weeks? Two months? You're, you're, we were here for a while. Yeah. Yeah, um, yeah. yeah throughout the, the prep up until semis and then uh, just after for a little bit for the games and then you went over just before, you went back home uh, for the final party training before the games. How different was that period of training when you were down here in that competitive group environment with coaches there day to day? compared to what you're currently training like now and what you you were training like before like what was the main the main differences in terms of like the great things about training and what were the the main like struggles of, of, of being in that environment as well you know what i don't actually think i had struggles apart from two with two lots of veggies arguing every morning <laughs> <laughs> um I've never had the opportunity, the opportunity to be a full-time athlete, which is what I was when I was living up in Wigan. I didn't have to look after anybody. Yeah. All I had to worry about is feeding myself, sleeping, and training. Yeah. And it was absolutely amazing. One thing that was obvious straight away is how much stress our day-to-day -day life actually causes to our body. Because I've been always saying like, oh, the recovery when you get older is so bad. Yeah. But there I was training with Taylor and Reggie and doing pretty much, well, not all the same things as they did, but the volume was so much higher than I was used to. And yet I was able to recover from it yeah. absolutely fine because yeah. I didn't have any other stress in my life. Yeah. So that was, that was a big eye opener, also helping me realize that actually I can do this shit. I'm, yeah. I'm still good for You're it. You're strong. But I remember 
one session watching Ella, Reggie and Taylor going with Devil's Presses and Bama Slabs and it was full send workout and I just sat there on the bike and the atmosphere was absolutely electric and I just saw them working so hard and like trying to beat each other throughout the whole and just not giving into it at all and I still have goosebumps talking about it because <laughs> I think for me that was the turning point of like oh fuck this yeah. is this is what the big dogs are made of this is this is where it is this yeah. is the intensity and then from then on it was just uh, it's just so much fun yeah. I did so many things that I did not think I was capable of you guys helped me massively off like every time there was a sound doubt he just would crash it straight away he was just <laughs> in a pause in a good way it's just yeah it was uh, yeah uh, there was a lot of doubts to start with like did not have the confidence and uh, yeah you, you guys just definitely made me a lot more confident just showing me that I can do all these things yeah. the best thing of having coach there on like looking at you uh, is that it can be adapted the session yeah. I'm programming as well for other people but it's our educated guess of how they're going to handle the session but the reality is not always that yeah, so yeah. having you there on hand you can make little tweaks that make all the difference yeah yeah so yeah. we've actually so, so going back to um like the difference between <coughs> then being able to train full-time we've had a, quite a few athletes that have joined and come to, to Wigan uh, more recently, there's 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 Reggie and, and and Taylor last season, and then there's the likes of um, Beth, Sophia, and and Phil Roy, and they're all kind of like going into that transition where they're trying to just work towards training, becoming full time, like sacrificing and putting the jobs to the side, um, and everyone kind of hits that realization point after about two or three weeks in, where the novelty of like being able to train full time like soon soon wears off um, and you realize that the thing that you used to do for a hobby is now actually it now actually more becomes your 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 job um, how what advice would you give for those people i guess is what i'm i'm trying to ask like you you go you've gone through being able to be you work in full time and then training on the side, and then you went through training full time, and now you've gone back through working full time and training on the side, and we'll, you know hopefully be able to go in between the two over the next season again. What advice would you give to those younger athletes now that are making that switch into full time training to be able to kind of like keep perspective and and to make sure that you know the seasons that they carry on doing this are a good ones. Well, I suppose you need to have a good why. Why are you doing this? Once you have that, like, and you need to go deep on that. Like, if, if it's just like, oh, I just want to look good on social media, that's not going to last. Yeah. Uh, but so going deep, um, I think there's like exercise. You ask yourself five questions. Why? Just yeah. why am I doing this? You answer it. Ask again. Why? Ask again. It's a bit like having, it's a bit like having a three-year-old child, actually. <laughs> so uh, have a good one but then being present and in, like not every day will be great and most of the time actually it won't be great to be fair but it's just enjoying the journey because when I love 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 the struggle of the peak prep before the comp yeah. then you've got that deload and then you feel so yeah. fucking invincible <laughs> when you step on that floor <laughs> It's just, it's just keeping that in mind that yeah. there needs to be that struggle first before you, before you feel that good. And the best thing, which before, before the games, one of the most things I was looking forward to was when I finish my last day, I don't need to take, I will not see protein powders, supplements, I will not sleep, I will not eat, and I won't give a shit if I can. <laughs> <laughs> It was, and I just could not wait for that, yeah. having that little time off, yeah. of not like being focused on anything, and, but you can't appreciate that until, unless you go through all the other, being really focused and disciplined with everything, yeah. so um, yeah, it's just staying in the moment and enjoying the process, and the, if you don't enjoy the process then it's not going to last. Just flipping that round then, so obviously you, you've also 
been working with the gym and kind of trading is a bit more on the side so you could say it looks a little bit more similar to all these kind of other people that that do do that you know they have the jobs and then they're doing the training alongside like have you got any you know anything that you'd any tips or anything you'd uh, suggest to those those people as well because like I say we get quite a few masters athletes messages asking you know like why we don't do a masters um, like specific program and we usually suggest that uh, they follow you know the all rounder or the strength bias but we obviously put like rep ranges and stuff in there so they can auto regulate it to themselves but have you got any like tips for those people those normal people out there that um, you know I've got the everyday struggle <laughs> yeah uh, depends it just depends on your goals mm-hmm. like, what, what is your goal like do you want to compete then you need to make sure that the same way you plan your meetings at work you plan when you're going to train mm-hmm. like you, you just have to plan for it and have it in the diary and even if you can't be asked to do it you just go and do it yeah. but if it's if you just want to be fit and healthy, you don't need to do individual programming. Just join a, join a gym, do classes, and if you feel like you want to work on something specific, just do some accessory work in the open gym. Happy yeah. days! Like that was one of the best things after the games when I had the three weeks off. I actually, apart from those five days after the games, I actually trained every day for uh, in our classes, and it was amazing because yeah. it's an hour of your day. And obviously I don't have kids, so it's easy for me to say, but I still have dogs that I have to look after and take out twice a day and feed them and so on. <laughs> um, but, uh, an hour of your day, there's like every gym's got a pretty decent timetable and yeah. I did not have to motivate myself and uh, I just got told what to do. I was done in an hour because if I train by myself, there'll be a lot of fuffing and chatting to other people so what I can do in an hour will stretch over to um, so it just really depends on, on your goal if you're serious about it then be serious about it and make time um, because if you really want to do that you will you will be able to do that yeah. but if if health is your priority then just do classes yeah yeah I um, going back to what you said previously about the kind of the struggle of the the lead up until competition like with how intense and, and the volume of the training and then you kind of have the deload and it, then you have the competition and then you have the time off to do you know whatever you want and not have to stress about you know what food you're eating how many hours you're sleeping and the supplements um, I often use the analogy of um, it's like it's like climbing a hill when you, you go out for a bike ride and you climb a big hill it's like you start at the bottom of the hill you feel good and you, you grind in you get halfway up you start feeling like you like like shit you get to the top and you're just absolutely like you're knackered but then when you're at the top you've got the feeling of accomplishment that you've got at the top of the hill and then when you're at the top of the hill you go down the hill and that's when it's fucking it's a good time and that going at the top of the hill is like the competition and then going down the hill is like you know doing the competition and then just like going all the way down the hill going as fast as possible having a good time is like that bit of time off after the competition um, to kind of like de-stress and then when you get to the bottom of the hill you're like right then where's my next like yeah. where's my next hill and, it, and it, next that's one. yeah it's, a, it's that's one way I like can to I go even, think about it can I climb even steeper hill next yeah time? exactly I'm on a bigger hill I'm going to go a bit faster <laughs> yeah, <exactly. laughs> yeah. I, want get, I want to get a more expensive bike <laughs> um, cool then right we've got a couple a couple left before we wrap it up I'm not going to ask you like did you enjoy the games or anything with games because you probably messed it loads of times. If you had one thing you wanted to talk about in your experience of the games, a good memory, something that funny that happened, like just give us one thing that sticks out in your head about your games experience that is something that you'll always remember. One thing that was completely different to every other competition I've ever done was the pool of the girls and it just felt I was the most nervous before the first workout, before the warm up, driving to the venue. I just felt sick with nerves. But as soon as I was there in the group of the girls that was competing against, it just felt like a bunch of mates just got together to yeah. throw down. Yeah. And obviously on the competition floor we were we wanted to beat each other. 
But as soon as we got over the finish line or in the warm up area, we just sat around and chatted shit and it was, <laughs> had such a good laugh. And I genuinely felt like I could just hang out with those girls. Like I could go out with them, I could go out for coffee, follow yeah. loads of them still on social media. And just, I've never had that experience of it, it just felt like bunch of friends, yeah. 20 friends got together to do a bit of exercising. It, that was just amazing. So I said to Matt, I was actually really happy that my first games experience was in the Masters category because yeah. it was, it just felt so chilled in the, like behind the scenes. Yeah. It, it was just, it just, it just made me so happy. Yeah. So that, <laughs> um, so that 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 feeling of like you know being in a, a nice group of, of of girls and just like belonging with those girls and just like getting on with them really well. You mentioned yeah. before about your barbells training camps and your workshops yeah. that you're doing with Gina and Becky. Um, yeah. Is that something that you, you well you, you probably already because you already ran them before you went to the games. Is that something that you uh, instilled kind of in those training camps where it's just about you know a lot of these women that are coming to your training camps maybe a bit nervous, like you were going towards, uh, going to the games and in, in warm-up area. Um, so is that like, so I guess just give, give, your, give your training camp, give your training camps a bit of a, a plug and just like, is that what happens when you come to one of your training camps? You just have that feeling where you're just involved with another yeah. load, of, load of girls and you get to know them and make friends and... That's, that's, the, that's the caption we have, um, get fit, um, have fun, make friends, and that's like when I was when I was at the games. I thought, oh my God, this is just the feel that we create in our barbells com- yeah. camps and comps and workshops. It always feels like you get just random bunch of people, and every time we run our uh, training camps abroad, to be fair, we've got a lot of returners now, so these people are actually friends. But yeah. we, when we run the first few, the, none, nobody really knew each other, and we finished the camp with the girls and we were like, how was this so amazing? Yeah. Like we just got strangers together and it just feels like healthy Hindu, you know? Yeah. <laughs> but it's just, um, yeah, it's, I don't know, there's something really empowering when, when not just women, when people just start like supporting each other and yeah. like there's just, no judgment that yeah. is, that's for really and I think that's where yourself Becky and Gina having known all three of you kind of like that's what how you'd sum you three up like lead from the front if they can see that you three together are running this kind of like training these training experiences and you you have that attitude amongst each other yeah. then that's what's that's what's going to rub off to the to the rest of the group isn't it yeah it's always comes from the top like whatever mentality you want to set in whatever you do you need to do it yourself first. You yeah. need to instill yeah. it. If you're going to be an ass, an asshole, the whole thing is going to. Everyone, <laughs> everyone will be an asshole. Yeah. yeah. If you want it to be good, you just need to start with yourself. Yeah. Sweet. Right. Well, last, last one, and wrap it up. Um, is it true that once upon a time someone said to you that you'd never make it to the games, and what do you have to say back to that person? Having stood on top on the um, podium at the game, you actually told me that's why um, that's why you will never win. And uh, I remember how it felt. It was like a stab in the heart. And, <laughs> I that. and um, yeah, in your fucking face. <laughs> <laughs> in your fucking face. That's what we can round it up on. Uh, it was good. Like I think people say, like if you have um, sometimes the positive encouragement. Um, it's as good as the one when somebody doubts you. Yeah. Depends. Depends how you yeah. take it then. Yeah. If you want to prove something you don't like, well, even if you like them, they say something, you want to prove them wrong. Yeah. It's always it's good to prove someone wrong. It does, doesn't it? It does. It does. Brilliant, right? Well, thanks, Nettie. Thank you very on. much. Yeah. And lie to know us. It's a pleasure. Um, <laughs> yeah. You enjoy, you've got last qualifier to do tonight. Yeah. And then well, a yeah. week off. Hopefully my bag's gonna survive. Which one's the last workout left? Dumbbell snatches. Loads of dumbbell snatches, then yeah. they go heavier, handstand walks, overhead lunges. Yeah. 
Sounds lush. It does sound like your perfect workout. Tag me in there, Tim. Come on, then. The wig on. Thanks very much, Nettie. Nice one, Nettie. Great to speak to you. That was really good.